And I think we're going to go to the phone lines, AP, and I'll let you do the introduction. A very special guest tonight on the Yeah, very special guest. It'll be the first time anybody has heard from Tim Banks on Rocky Top, and we're joined by Tennessee's defensive coordinator. As uh, Coach Banks, we welcome you to the nation. Hey, glad to be here, guys. How we doing? We're doing great. And uh, how, how's this first week been on the job for you? Uh, I'll be honest, man. It's been a whirlwind so far, but, but it's good, you know. It's good. Good people here, obviously. Some good food. You know, players are eager. I mean, it's been a good ride, man. Excited to be here. Hey, Tam, it's Chris uh, with ESPN, and we're, we're glad to have you on our show tonight. Look forward to catching up with you down the road. Uh, you know, when you look at this job, and, and I know you're one of those guys and talking to people around the country, you were going to get a defensive coordinator's job somewhere. Um, Tennessee, when you got the call, when you got the opportunity, what jumped out to you the most about this particular position and this role? Well, I think Coach Heifel, you know, obviously the success he's had at um, Central Florida and, and his reputation as a, um, you know, offensive coach that, that's going to light the scoreboard up. You know, for me as a coordinator, you know, it's not a better guy that I would want to work with because I know they're going to score a ton of points, you know, and I understand what, what, what's required on our side of the ball. So for me to have a chance to be with a guy like that and, you know, get some stops, I just feel like it's a pretty good match and, you know, we can really do some good things together. We know what Josh wants to do on offense. What do you want the mantra, what do you want the MO to be of your defense, Tim? Well, I think no different than most defensive coaches. You know, you want guys that are going to play extremely hard, you know, have a passion to play defense, you know, playing with great energy and juice, you know, and just from a structural perspective, I just think the way the game is changed, you know, you have to be multiple, you know, being able to get in four down, three down. You know, you, you really want the offense to have to play in the dark. So, you know, we're, we're going to have fun. You know, it'll be guys that will be tremendous athletes, obviously, that will be able to recruit. You know, we want to put them in the best positions to be able to attack and, and get after the quarterback. So, you know, we, you know, we just want tough guys to play hard. And for us, we're going to be multiple in doing it and enjoying what we do when we come to work, man. It, it's really, really a great opportunity for anybody that enjoys it. We really love to play defense, I should say, and playing in a system like that we'll put together. Um, I think it's really going to be a great ride. Coach Banks, it's Austin again. You, uh, When you got the job, Rodney Garner was already here as the defensive line coach, um, and, and I think you guys have known each other. And then Willie Martinez, uh, you hire him earlier in the week and bring him back to Rocky Top. You actually played for Coach Martinez. Um, how, how, how neat is that to almost kind of come full circle to now where you know, you're working together and coaching together and uh, just kind of have, talk about those two additions to your defensive side? Well, it's awesome. You know, I start with Rodney Gardner. You know, I think his reputation speaks for himself. You know, he's he coached at you know, multiple SEC um, universities and had success everywhere he's been. You know, and like you said, I've known him for a while, you know, through a recruiting trail. And I know how he cares about kids and how diligent he is about his business. So, you know, to me, he was a no-brainer to have an opportunity to work with a guy like that. And, and when you're talking about Willie, you know, Martinez, you know, just a stand-up guy. You know, he was that way when he was my position coach many, many years ago. And he hasn't changed. You know, we've maintained our relationship over the years. And just the way he's gone about his business and the professional that he's been throughout his career, you know, having a guy like that, you know, back here in Rocky Top, you know, it really just it was, it was a no-miss, you know, great opportunity for me. Can't miss, I should say. And a great opportunity for me to be able to bring him back up Hey, Tim, it's Chris again from ESPN. When you look at Rodney and Willie both, what, what, are, the, what are the benefits or how, much, how beneficial is it to you and the kids and the entire program that both guys have not only coached in the SEC and recruited in the SEC, they both coached at Tennessee? I think it's huge. You know, obviously I, the, the, the program speaks for itself in a great tradition, but having someone that has, that has lived it, you know, you know, understands the lay of the land, um, obviously, the alums, you know, the great players that have come through here. Um, you know, relationships is everything in this business. You know, and these guys obviously have a previous relationship with a lot of great players that have come through here. And even just, you know, the administration, um, it, it's huge. It, it really is. It just really gives us a, instead of playing in the dark and trying to figure this thing out, you know, you got some guys that have already walked in those, um, those, those steps or had those steps in terms of building relationships here. It just kind of helps me, you know, to, to get this thing going and hit the ground running. Yeah, Tim, I, I've known Rodney since 96, I guess, and I kid him all the time. 
every couple of years it seems like his family grows. I think he's got about ten daughters now. So you reminded when you see him. I, I remember when Bree was born. His one of his oldest here in Knoxville back in 1997. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, he, he he's got a lot of a lot of them over there, and I hear they're all great athletes. So, yeah, you know, it, it's fun because Rodney still has great juice and great energy. You know, you wouldn't know he's been coaching as long as he has. So. He's, he's been awesome, and it sounds like he has a beautiful family with some great athletes back home. But I'll, I'll definitely pass the message along. Coach, it's Austin again. How, how will you look to try to fill out the rest of your staff defensively? And then, two, like when you got here, how much did you kind of hit the ground running, not just recruiting because I think that's, that never stops, but just kind of getting to know the, the parts of your defense, who you have, what pieces you have, what pieces are coming in in this 2021 recruiting class? Yeah, you, you, you hit it you know, as best you can, you know, try to figure it out. But we started really just evaluating the roster, you know, looking at the um, our current players here, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what our needs were just from a, uh, how many DBs we have versus linebacker, C line, et cetera. Um, and then obviously watching the tape on all of our 21 commits, you know, where they would fit, you know, based on our system. Um, you know, the work never stops, as you know. You know, we're just kind of still plowing through it. You know, and as far as the, you know, the last couple hires we got, you know, one of the things that's been extremely humbling about this job is, you know, so many people around the country know what a tremendous opportunity is to be at Rocky Top. You know, so we, we got a lot of guys who are very, very interested in it, you know, but just like anything, we just want to make sure we bring the right people into our family. And, you know, Coach Hype is doing a great job of making sure that, you know, we have all the resources and in, in, in place to be able to get the right people in here. So, um, you know, we should be wrapping this thing up sooner than later. And um, it's obviously just like the rest of the hires. You know, we'll get someone here that, you know, understands what the expectations are and and is ready for that uh, opportunity. You've predominantly been around 4-3 defenses, uh, to to the best of my knowledge. Uh, Is that what you will hope to run here, or do you have any preference? I mean, what what will the defense look like from a schematic standpoint? No, I I, I don't. You know, it's like most coaches, you know, at least the good ones that I've been around, you know, you try to evaluate your personnel first and foremost, you know, and then you obviously evaluate the conference, you know, see what, you know, um, the different offenses look like. And and then you cater it that way. You build your defense that way. So, you know, I think I alluded to that earlier. You know, we want to be multiple, you know, depending on who we're playing and depending on, you know, what advantages that we can – you know, get, you know, we may be four down, we may be three down, you know, we, we may be, um, you know, nickel front, we may be in, you know, big front. It just depends on what we're seeing and the personnel we got here. But the thing that I can't tell you is, you know, we're going to play extremely hard, you know, we're going to play fast, and, you know, we're, we're, we're going to enjoy doing it. Tim, this is a, a group of players that have been through a lot of coaching change. You know, you had the investigation, you, you know, you got all new coaches coming in. What has been your message to, to, to your kids, and, and what has sort of been your takeaway and what you've heard from them as you guys get ready now for spring ball coming up and, and, and going forward from there? Yeah, you know, it's always tough anytime you have a transition. You know, a lot of these guys obviously signed up, you know, for a different staff. But as I told every one of my players, you know, when I signed that contract, you know, these guys became part of my family. They are my they're, – they're my kids. I might as well have sat in their home. You know, I, I fall in love um, very easy. You know, when I when I find a dotted line and I told those guys I'm going to love them, you know, I'm going to put them in situations that are going to help them grow not only as football players but as men. You know, I said trust is earned over time, you know, but it works both ways. You know, I work as hard as I can to earn theirs, and, and I expect them to do the same thing with what they do and how they carry themselves day in and day out. And then with that all being said, you know, we're going to have great urgency about our business. So I, I'm excited about the guys. You know, I know it's been a tough journey, you know, again, with the transition, you know, but I think we got some, some competitors in this building, you know, that's excited about the opportunities that lay ahead. Coach, you, you sound like someone who really respects the history and, and, and the, the tradition here at Tennessee. Uh, what, what, what were your first, you know, recollections of Tennessee football, maybe as a kid or, or even just growing up in, in, in the industry and as a coach? I mean, what – you know, what what did you look at it from afar? What did you think of it? I mean, I know you've predominantly coached, you know, in Big Ten country, but at the same time, you know, Tennessee's such a national brand. Um, kind of what were your thoughts uh, before you got here? Well, I, I, I coached at the University of Memphis for a few years. So, you know, I've been down this way, and I understand what that, that Big T represents and, and the pride that the people have in this great state of Tennessee. 
and really in this region and, and across the country. So it, it, it's obviously a, a, a place that has, has developed a lot of or had a lot of great players come through here. But, you know, obviously for Reggie White to, to Peyton Manning, you know, to Witten, you know, it, it's just the, the list goes on. So for me to have a chance to be a part of this, um, you know, this university, to me, you know, it, it's only a few like this, you know, in, in the world. And for me to have a chance to be a part of it, it's very humbling. And like I said, it's super exciting. Tim, we, we talked a little bit about, about this a minute ago, but, you know, the game has changed so much. Gosh, I think of the way it's just changed in the last 10 years and the way it's evolved uh, on both sides of the football and certainly on offense. Everybody's going tempo. They're spreading you out. From a defensive perspective, how have you seen it change the most and how do you think going forward to combat what teams are doing on offense will it continue to change? Well, I think it's what you said. You know, they're, they're going to play extremely fast, and, and they should. You know, it's a probability game. You know, the, the faster you play, the more stats you get, the more likely they got a chance to, you know, create big plays and score touchdowns. So we just got to be able to match that intensity. You know, we have to be able to be multiple. You know, if they figure out what you're in, you know, and they know exactly what they're getting, you know, that gives them the edge. You know, so as much as that we can play fast, you know, keep it simple so the kids can, can execute, I think it plays in our hands. But, you know, we don't want to be overly complicated because you never know week in and week out what you're going to get from different offenses. So, you know, you want to put a system together that, that allows the kids to be able to play fast, make battlefield decisions, and be able to out-execute guys. Because the reality of it is, you know, if you don't, you know, a team may be three wide, all empty, you know, running a play this week, and then the next week, you know, it's totally different. And if your kids don't understand it and then have a great grasp of your system, you know, all of a sudden you're down 14 points before you blink your eyes. So we just want to be fast and we want to be simple and we want to be aggressive. Coach, who had a big impact on you, uh, you know, both as a player and as a coach? I mean, when you look back and, you know, kind of, you know, a mentor or two that helped you know, you get to where you're at. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, you know, that's, that's, a, that's always a tough question because there's so many people that, you know, have come in my life and, you know, I've been able to gain something from them. You know, I think of my dad first and foremost, you know, how he pushed me, you know, growing up, you know, really using a, using sports as a vehicle to teach life lessons, you know, when things got hard, you know, not allowing me to quit, you know, and, and when I had some success, you know, not allowing me to, um, you, you know, think that I've arrived. So, you know, I always have to start with my dad. You know, from a, from a coaching perspective, you know, my, my high school coach, um, bless his heart, James Reynolds, who passed away um, this season, you know, um, once again, one of the first male, male role models um, that I had in my life that, that wasn't my dad and just the way he went about his business and the way he cared and loved on us as players and then in turn disciplined us, um, you know, is, is, is a leadership style that, that I use to this day. You know, but it, but it's been so many more. You know, I'll even you know James Franklin um, at Penn State, the guy I just left. You know, not only was he um, uh, you know my boss, but he was also a friend. You know, and uh, so many conversations we had about running programs, so many things that, so many um, lessons that he would share with me and the staff are invaluable. So, you know, I don't want to leave anybody out. There's so many guys that have had you know great influence on me, but those are the three guys that come to mind right now. How much? How much did uh, Coach Martinez have an impact on you? And, and then, if if he had quite a bit of an impact, then what? How much does that you know make it easier to look at the kids in your room right now and say, you know, I played for him, and and you know when I'm you know I'm proof when you work hard, you know, good things come to you. You know, this is the kind of stuff that we can get done here if you guys buy in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Coach Martinez was awesome for me. You know, he coached me my second year. Um, and just the way the way he went about his business, even then, you know, I remember it was it was unique, you know, because he was he was always intense, you know, but he was always, you know, fair, you know, he he held us to a high standard, and um, you know, you kind of understood exactly what you were going to get out of him, you know, he was always a technician, you know, making sure that you know we didn't take any technique that he was teaching for granted, and, and then to be quite honest with you, you know, we've been able, I've been able to watch him from afar. You know, if I, as I have grown through this coaching profession, and, and he hasn't changed. You know, again, everyone he's been, he, he's done a tremendous job, you know, whether it was coaching or recruiting. And like I said earlier, you know, having an opportunity to get him in the room and share him with the players here was really a no-brainer for me. 
Well, Tim, man, we really appreciate the time. It's uh, it's cool to see a, a Detroit, Michigan kid here on Rocky Top, man. That's I know it's been quite yeah. a journey. You know, you Bowling Green, Ferris State, Memphis, and and and, and I really love your resume. I love the fact that you've worked your way up. You know, from from those schools to to the Big Ten, now the SEC, and. And we look forward to seeing you and catching up with you down the road. We, we gave Josh Heupel a pass the last time we are on, so we'll give you one. But the next time we get you on, man, you're going to have to sing Rocky Top, so you better learn the word, okay? <laughs> I don't think he has to L- sing Rocky Top. To I, I think you need to say vowels. Because th- Aaron Hayden, who's from Detroit, Michigan, says vowels. How do you say it, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> go balls. <laughs> there we go, baby. Hey, Tim, man, we really appreciate it, man. Best of luck to you, and we look forward to catching up with you down the road, okay? Absolutely, guys. Appreciate you guys have. Thank you. All right, that's defensive coordinator, Tennessee defensive coordinator, Tim Banks, as I said, from Detroit, Michigan to Rocky Top. As he uh, 